Look, we move on to a very, uh, and I mentioned before the break, uh, before the news, a very sad story. Um, we don't know his name yet, and that is for reasons of, of privacy. 34-year-old uh, man, uh, 34-year-old new husband, actually, um, from Gujarat in India, been in the country, I think, a year or just around a year, aiming to get a job, settle down here, buy a house with his bride, and live the dream, live the Kiwi dream. And he was uh, taking care of this dairy um, for some friends who owned it. And what more Kiwi thing to do than work in a dairy, the corner shop? Uh, it didn't work out well, and you will have heard the descriptions from police. Um, an offender leaves the dairy with the cash till, puts it on a wheelie bin. The worker comes up to him, talks to him. He is stabbed. He returns to the shop, but he dies when he arrives at hospital. It's just such a sad bloody meaningless way to die. Um, and I think is a pretty sad punctuation point in what has been a growing issue around law and order in this country and crime right at the front of the community, crime that involves people driving cars through shop fronts, sticking up dairies, and some would almost say petty crime. These aren't master criminals. They're thugs, opportunists, people I imagine at the bottom of the socio-economic um, spectrum. There's nothing romantic about a crime like this, like n of knocking over a da dairy or doing a ram raid, you scum, really. Um, but boy, it creates a real risk in our community. And to discuss that risk and how we can deal with it, we're doing, joined by Sunny uh, Koshal. Sunny is the chair of the Dairy Owners Association. Sunny, thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. Kia ora. Um, Sunny, can you tell us who, you, who your group represents? So we represent the dairies and independent businesses across New Zealand from Kataya to Bluff, uh, over 5,000 businesses um, in dairy and business owners group. Right. Um, Sonny, as I've said, the dairy, the corner store, the super ed, it's as Kiwi as anything. It is part of our, our culture, right? Going down to the that's, shops. That's very true. It has been a Kiwi way of life over the century. And now this institution is endangered. You know, it's constant, constantly under, under attack. Uh, and these opportunists, as you rightly said, these offenders, they are making life difficult for the diff uh, businesses and, and our, our country is becoming lawless you know a, a sense of lawlessness is gripping entire country and, yeah. and we are beyond sad angry and scared yeah do you and you are kind of on the front line and this is the thing as i've reflected over the last few days this is right in people's communities because your sh your members are the retailers, are the businesses that most people... I can't think of the hundreds of thousands of visits to your members' uh, you know, shops that happen every single day all across New Zealand. It must be millions, millions of transactions a day, millions of people coming in and out of stores all over the country. That's very true. Look, the, the small business owners, uh, uh, basically some small businesses are the bird line of New Zealand economy. I mm. mean, uh, overall, uh, the, the whole uh, industry, if you look at the small businesses across New Zealand, they, they are, you know, constructively uh, uh, contributing uh, over 26% to the GDP. Wow. Wow. So, Sonny, what has been the trends in security for your members, and what have they been telling you about how safe or otherwise they feel in their shops? Are there specific things that have happened that have made things more risky, or is it just a general trend? Uh, look, well, first of all, whatever happened, um, you know, yesterday, it's so sad. It was our worst fear, and worst has happened. And it was inevitable. Uh, it was preventable. You know, we could have avoided this tragedy had the government listened to us over the last five years. But he has, it hasn't happened. And the government has never listened to the retailers and their safety and their concerns. Uh, you know, the, uh, we, we have uh, given our, uh, 
peace of mind a number of times, solutions, the uh, recommendations, even in the last uh, um, just over 31 days now, yes, over a month, uh, we, we met with the Minister of Police. It was very hard to meet with him. Finally, we could secure an appointment. We have given him the manifesto, uh, eight points manifesto, what needs to be done. Those were the solutions. And guess what? Uh, now, one month over, uh, the minister hasn't had the courtesy to come back with the responses that we were promised. So that tells, uh, tells you the, how much government is, is, is caring or, or, or giving an urgency uh, for the uh, safety of New Zealanders. What were the, what was the guts of that eight point plan that you presented to the minister? See, it, it, it starts first of all admitting that we have a problem. You know, first of all, you know, to to find a solution, you need to admit that that we have a, 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 a like of a crime emergency. Every New Zealander can see that one, but uh, uh, apart from the government. Yeah. Right? And then, then we need to have those funds to, to deal with this situation, the, uh, to, to deal with the emergency. So the $6 million funds which were announced uh, six months ago, they are still uh, uh, sitting uh, in, in the government's coffin somewhere. Only yeah. a few hundred thousands have been spent. Yeah. And they, they, they set the whole model wrong uh, for the distribution of those uh, funds. I There's no application process. You know, you, first of all, you have to remunerate it uh, quite a number of times to to be considered and that too depending upon the police authorities if they consider you or not so uh, so shop owners or applicant has no say uh, yeah. to access so you cannot access those funds okay what would make sonny let's go back to basics here what would make your members businesses safer look what we need is we we need urgent actions we need urgent solution and action from the minister to stop this senseless crime full stop not an empathy for the victims okay and, but and, what and i'm saying is what in practical terms makes a dairy safer stops the um, crime yeah we we need more police uh visible police on on the uh, uh, patrolling uh, on the street yeah. you know uh, there need to be some deterrent, and most important is a message, a strong message needs to go from the government that uh, if the offenders uh, are doing any crime, they would be, uh, they would have to do the time. So, so you say more deterrence uh, in terms of those who are caught, and exactly simply and more. The, and, and do you have any studies that show, Sonny, that more police look, and patrol cars driving around at night is going to stop crime, or would have stopped you know, this crime the other night? Yeah, you see, I mean, when you're driving, when, when you see a cop car, what do you do? You always check your speed. You know, you try to put uh, the, the foot on the brake. Why do you do? Because there's a deterrent. So unless and until there's the deterrent, there is a consequences. You know, that's what is happening right now. The offenders have no fear of police, no fear of being caught, no fear of the law or any consequences. Whereas the offenders must know they will get caught and there are consequences they have to do. They would be held accountable, which is not happening right now. Yeah, I heard uh, Minister Hipkins yesterday say the government can simply not afford, doesn't have the money to take protective measures for every dairy in the country, every shop owner in the country, and seem to be suggesting that at some stage, Sonny, your members might have to dip into their pockets and do more themselves to protect themselves to stay in business. See, our members are already doing, you know, the, it's just becoming very hard to, for, for them to, um, you know, meet with that kind of cost. And when the government says they have no money, but they do have money for useless spending. You know, they do have money for uh, so many other uh, uh, bills and, you know, that, that they are ramming uh, an urgency, but not for the security and safety of the, of the uh, New Zealanders. They are, those are hardworking people. Yeah, but, but if you choose to run a business, there is a cost to running business, right? Uh, and is, for, is, and for your members, increasingly security is part of that cost. You're right, but these members are also paying the taxes, the GST yeah, I, and excise and everything. But the government need to spend at least a, some fraction of it, which yeah. they are not. Mm. Is it true that this particular dairy had applied to have a fog cannon installed and that application had been rejected? Yes. 
Yes, there's a case, and there are so many hundreds of dairies and businesses over in, in New Zealand who have uh, 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 been asking for that funding, but they have been declined because they, there's no application process, because uh, there is no eligibility criteria, because they do not have the access. Yeah, and I must because say the minister the, appeared confused and uncertain about that when he spoke about it yesterday. So you're saying that whole scheme was a bit of window dressing, as it were, if you'll excuse the pun, and really the ability to say I need a fog cannon and to get one uh, from that government scheme really doesn't exist. That's right. And, and we, we have guided uh, at that time, we told the government and also the authority how this can work, you know, the, the mm. way application process can be set up. But they never listened. They haven't set up. Yeah. including the, uh, the meeting with the minister a month ago, we, we, we told him again and given in writing as well. Yeah. Um, that's, that's where the frustration is. Yeah. Uh, Sonny, uh, let's, let's move on to, if you like, the emotional impact of someone like this. Um, gosh, I'm just thinking of the nice people I know and they're all uh, Indian, uh, Pakistani people who work in dairies and you do, you get to know them and they're like your friends and... I sure and how you going. Um, this has got to have an impact on people, on your members in their day-to-day -day lives. This has got to cause some real fear in them. You're right. And not only the business owners or small businesses, the, the average New Zealander is not safe. You might be hearing that, you know, there are, uh, you know, how the uh, assaults are happening in broad daylight, you know, when people are shopping, on day, you know, and, and on the streets. So where are you safe? Where do we put a stop? It, yeah. Unless and until the government gets tough on time, no money can solve this problem. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we, we, yeah. we, we need to take bold actions. Yeah. We, need to, we need to rise above uh, the uh, uh, political ideology. Yeah. Um, is there, obviously Auckland is the hotbed for this, uh, Sunny, isn't it? Uh, yes, Auckland, but uh, the, uh, the, you know, the same is happening in Christchurch. The same is happening in Bay of Plenty. It's, it's happening everywhere. Only the re reporting has, uh, is now under-reporting. There's a 70% under-reporting right now because people and the businesses, they have lost their faith in the police and also the judicial system. Uh, don't take me wrong. The police are doing their job, but the police itself needs help. They need resources. They need to be backed up but they have, they're, they're feeling like their hands are tied. Yeah, I wonder, it's funny, you know, Sonny, I was just thinking, if this sort of thing happened to big supermarkets, boy, I reckon we'd see some action then. You're right, and you see what happened in same in Mount Albert area, when there was one uh, uh, unfortunate incident, uh, I think there was somebody uh, uh, thrown a machete or something at Prime Minister's office, how soon that action happened and how soon they apprehended the... the that offenders. was just around the corner, actually, from this deal. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So when they can do it, and then and, uh, they can do for the other offenders as well yeah. who yeah. are committing a serious crime. Mm. It's, again, the matter of urgency and this catch-and-release policy need to stop. Yeah. Wow. You're saying catch-and-release of criminals, of offenders? Yes. Yes. Yeah. No ankle bracelets, lock them up? Uh, look, I mean, the consequences need to be there. And then, uh, you know, our, our law, in fact, has lots of flaws. You know, we need to stop being weak uh, in law. And our judicial system is actually failing the police and our communities. Mm. Yeah. Look, um, could I also add, the minister says a thousand fog cannons have been installed under that government scheme, which I think started in 2018. Are you denying that you can get a fog cannon if you want one, or is it just a difficult process? I would like to challenge the minister on that one. Uh, actually, that was again in 2017 when the previous uh, government was in place, the national government. At that time, we had taken the delegation to uh, uh, the parliament. We had spoken to the, uh, the uh, concerned ministers and the MPs at that time. And during that time, on our demand, uh, the then government has agreed to set up a, a, a fund that was a $1.8 million fund to, um, to uh, help the business owners buying the four cannons. 
and that that's where uh, the four cannons uh, uh, you know yeah. uh, was was started and after that one the labor government has has only uh, 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 topped that fund i think once or twice otherwise they have not uh, topped that one we have been um, crying out for help so it's not the minister's achievement that fund was announced by the previous uh, government and the action was done by the previous government but uh, during the, uh, uh, the current government uh, or, or, or the minister i would like to see what new initiative has been taken okay. nothing so, so sunny are you saying he's fibbing he's lying he is is, is incorrect it's, it's not his initiative it's not his government's initiative yeah and and the initiative that we have been asking uh, from this government are not happening from the last five years. They are not listening. Yeah. Because they want to be soft on crime. Okay, well, I... Yeah, they, have, I they, have, they have already repealed three-strike law. I mean, I would like to say this one. You know, when they were repealing three-strike law, during that time, last year, on 3rd of December, I appeared in front of the select committee, which was uh, considering um, the submissions on three-strike law repeal. At that time, I had put it on record that we will demand that the Prime Minister and Minister of Justice resign if anyone is killed by someone who would otherwise be in jail under the existing law. Well, yeah, we'll they be... will have mm. blood on their hands. It's only a matter of time, and sadly, dairies are in the front line. That was my own record submission as well. Um, so it has happened. If there isn't change, if there isn't action, do you worry that this could happen again? It would happen again uh, if it is not stopped. That's where the urgent actions are required. And this could happen to anyone, any of your listeners, any of the business owners, any of the homeowners, any of the residents, any of the citizens. It's that serious. Yeah. Sunny, meantime, I wanted to ask you, what can the millions probably of New Zealanders who walk into a dairy every day and interact with your members every day. What can we do to help you? Because it must be a hell of a time for your members. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, right now we are trying to support uh, the uh, the family of the victim. So uh, as we are we are setting up. Uh, we are set up a give a little page also, and we are trying uh, other modes of fundraising. That's one. But overall, uh, across New Zealand, you know, wherever those small dairies are, they need your help. And they have been constructively contributing to the to the uh, economy. They have been part of the society. Let's keep these guys trading. Let's keep uh, their businesses on. Let's support our local dairies. Good on you, Sonny. And I thank you very much indeed for your frank talk and the time you have given us today. And, uh, you know, the platform's uh, commiserations and sympathies uh, to the family of this young man who's died so tragically. Thank you for your support. Yes. Sunny uh, Koshal, the chair of the Dairy Owners Association, 5,000 businesses across the country, and you've been into one of them in the last week. I could almost guarantee it. Um, and we do. Millions of transactions a day are at the front line. See, a ram raid at night is different. There's no one in the shop, and the stuff gets taken, right? Uh, you rip off a dairy, generally, you're ripping off a dairy, there's someone behind the counter and they got to confront you and you're, con well, you're the scum are con confronting them. And it might seem a small crime, but it's a crime that can have the most, as we have seen in the last two days, can have the most serious of consequences. Sonny was pretty damning there. He suggested that Chris Hipkins has basically been fibbing, that the fog cannon scheme was not his scheme and predates the Labor government and that there is no uh, workable formal application for getting help from the government. I would argue that also maybe in the, real, in the modern world the cost of running a dairy has gone up, which mean, might mean you pay more at the dairy than you have because they build that into their costs quite clearly. Um, but this is a real problem. Um, just think about this. How many times you go to a dairy in your life? I reckon it would be dairies, corner stores, superettes are the most visited shops in New Zealand. I would say, I would think, absolutely. Not so much now if you're not a smoker. Just saying, probably why I've been to so many dairies in my life.